All right. Um, I've got associate directors affiliated with this core. Uh, Paul McLean runs the animal phenotyping facilities, so he will tell you about that aspect of our, our core resources. Uh, Ed Melanson is also one of our, our associate directors, and he's responsible for um, running, maintaining our metabolic chamber or room calorimeter that is a very unique resource. Uh, so he's on the call. If there are any questions related to this, he can answer them. Um, this is just a, a table to summarize the extent of the human phenotyping that we do through the core. Our focus on energy balance is really on the energy expenditure side of the equation. Um, we have multiple metabolic carts that we use for the measurement of energy expenditure and substrate utilization by indirect calorimetry. We have the metabolic chamber where we can do this um, over 24 hours or multiple days. And for the energy intake side of the equation, we don't want to duplicate um, resources. So we partner with the CCTSI Nutrition Core and the NORC CIT Core. Um, so we're closely with Janine and Vicki to, to handle this side of investigators' needs. One of our most requested services is for the assessment of body composition, various aspects of body composition. Our primary means of doing that is through DEXA, dual energy x-ray absorptiometry. Um, and we also just got through a shared instrumentation grant through the NIH, a new high resolution PQCT for the measurement of bone mass primarily, but uh, we're waiting to see how well it also measures muscle mass. Um, then we also have exercise testing capabilities. This can be maximal or submaximal with or without the measurement of oxygen uptake through indirect calorimetry. We have strength testing. We have a facility for doing um, exercise intervention trials, actually two facilities that I'll tell you about. And then we can also provide guidance for helping investigators assess physical activity using multiple devices on the market. Uh, this is a, a, a picture of the room calorimeter that Ed runs. Um, it, uh, it is used primarily for 24-hour measurements of energy expenditure, but I think we've had studies that have kept participants in this room for up to seven days or maybe even longer. Um, we can measure various aspects of energy expenditure, total over the course of a day, resting component, non-resting component, uh, sleeping expenditure. We have um, the means of putting exercise devices, cycle ergometer or a small treadmill into the room so that we can get uh, measurements of, of energy expenditure during exercise as well. We can also get uh, certain indicators of fuel utilization at rest and during exercise, measuring the respiratory quo quotient, the non-protein respiratory quotient, and um, by, by various calculations, estimates of which substrates are being oxidized. This um, resource is located on the Inpatient Clinical and Translational Research Center that's in the hospital on 12 East. So if you have any questions about this, Ed Melanson is the go-to person. The last bullet that I have on this slide, Ed is also our, our local expert for this, uh, doubly labeled water with deuterium and O18 is another method of assessing energy expenditure in real world conditions. So you just have to drink this water. We get um, urine samples, can also be done in blood and maybe saliva to measure the decay of these two um, isotopes. So the O18 is uh, lost through the body, both through uh, water and through the production of carbon dioxide whereas the loss of the deuterium is only through water. So we look at the decay of those two isotopes and the greater decay of the O18 reflects the increased loss 
beyond just water loss attributable to the production of CO2, which is related to oxygen consumption and energy expenditure. So it's a pretty cool mechanism to try to get at real free living energy expenditure. Um, our exercise testing capabilities are um, located on the outpatient CTRC. Currently that's on the third floor of the Latrino building, but we'll be moving next month to the sixth floor of the new Anschutz Health Sciences building. So our metabolic carts, we have multiple of them, um, are used for indirect calorimetry. That's pictured here in this slide. This can interface with a 12 lead EKG unit and we can put either treadmill, cycle ergometer, uh, multiple types of cycle ergometers in here. And we have the means of hooking people up to uh, um, a device that will capture all exhaled air that can then be analyzed for measurement of oxygen uptake. Um, we can use these sorts of techniques during exercise, but also under resting conditions. Uh, this is uh, the primary device that we use for strength testing. It's the CSMI HUMAC norm. Um, it can be put in a variety of positions to assess the strength of almost every major muscle group. We can do uh, these tests under isometric or isokinetic conditions so we can get measures of both strength and uh, power. That's also located on the outpatient CTRC. Our body composition device is, as I mentioned, is the DEXA. We use the Hologic Horizon, which is the, their most current model. And we try to keep it up to date with the most current versions of their software. We can get uh, estimates of both total and regional um, fat mass and fat-free mass. And we can draw in other regions if there are specific regions of interest. So one that is somewhat canned in the program is to get an estimate of abdominal visceral fat mass. Um, this device is also used for the measurement of bone, bone mineral content and bone mineral density, which are indicators of risk for osteoporosis. This is also located on the outpatient CTRC. I, I don't have a picture of our new device, which was just, just delivered a few weeks ago, but this is our old peripheral quantitative computed tomography device, the Scanco XCT 3000. This is going to be replaced with, uh, it has been replaced with this new Scanco high resolution scanner. So you can do both lower leg and forearm measurements of multiple components of bone health. Um, and can get some very cool uh, images where you can peel away the cortical shell of bone and just look at the trabecular structure or vice versa, just look at the cortical structure and get indices of cortical porosity, uh, bone strength and other metrics. Oh, sorry, I guess I didn't have that picture up there. That's the cool picture I was talking about. Um, these are some of the devices that we used for the measurement of physical activity. We have some of these, um, but they're, they're, most of them are being used in studies. So if an investigator wants to adopt this for one of their protocols, they may need to buy some devices. But we can certainly provide guidance on which ones are the best to meet the needs of the study. So the three over on the right are triaxial accelerometers. They get um, very good um, summations of both sedentary and physical activity time. Some of them do better than others in, in uh, quantifying whether that is low, moderate, or vigorous intensity. Uh, the one down here in the lower right-hand corner, the Active Pal, is, uh, has some unique advantages because it's worn on the thigh. We just put a slab of Tegaderm over that to keep it in place. It can remain on the body during showering, um, other activities. So you can leave it on for multiple days. And the advantage of that is that if you have a long period of no activity, you know that that person was truly sedentary. Whereas with some of these other devices, it could be that it's sitting on the uh, nightstand because they have to be removed at night during showering, et cetera. Um, some of our lowest cost devices are just pedometers. It, you just need indicators of step counts. 
We also have the means of using GPS, but their disadvantage of that is that you might lose signal for certain parts of the day, depending on where people are. Uh, this is our current exercise training facility in the Leprino building. It is used for research purposes only, and we will have a new facility in the Anschutz Health Sciences building that will be very similar to this. So full line of uh, resistance equipment. We have the Cybex uh, line in here. We also have a full array of treadmills, cycle ergometers, ellipticals, uh, rowing ergometers, and a few other uh, pieces of equipment. Um, Pre-COVID, the way we ran this exercise facility was to have it staffed these three sessions during the day, times when we think it would be convenient for people to come in, and then Saturdays, Saturday mornings. So before COVID, we didn't require any scheduling of these visits. Uh, participants would know it would be staffed. They could show up during any of these and get um, almost individualized, maybe one on four, one on five um, exercise supervision for their intervention. But our current COVID restrictions uh, require that we schedule all exercise training visits. We have to control how many people are in the facility because exercise is an aerosol generating procedure and uh, the coronavirus is transmitted through aerosols. So we have very strict safety um, procedures that we follow. Um, we also utilize the exercise facility in the Anschutz Health and Wellness Center. Um, so this, this might be more appropriate for some studies, uh, might be a better option when participants do not have to be as closely supervised as in our smaller facility, if a protocol needs more flexibility for when participants can exercise, or if you wanna do group exercise sessions, that can be accommodated much better over at the Health and Wellness Center. So you could contact Janine or Vicki for that. Um, this is my last slide. So I just wanna point out that if you have any questions, you can certainly contact me but the better point of contact is uh, Jerry Hamilton, who uh, I think I've been directing this core for 20 years, and he's been with me the entire 20 years. So uh, he, he knows the operations better than I do. And I will turn this over to Paul. All right. So with the animal facilities in the, in the Energy Balance Assessment core, we really try to provide the same sort of measures that, that Wendy and Ed provide and Janine and Vicki provide in humans. So we have uh, equipment and facilities to measure energy balance, both sides of the energy balance equation, energy intake, energy expenditure. We can measure um, physical activity, we have the equipment to, um, uh, for exercise interventions in small rodents. Uh, we have measures of body composition. Um, and in some uh, unique cases, we can use uh, radio labeled tracers to look at nutrient trafficking and retention. So our animal facility is located on the fifth floor of RC1 North. Um, uh, this is an animal, an IACUC approved animal satellite facility that we keep close to thermoneutral temperatures for metabolic studies. Our animals can be housed in either these metabolic cages, these wire bottom metabolic cages or static caging. We do a lot of studies individually housed in these types of cages so that we can uh, get accurate measures of energy intake um, and, and prevent uh, caprophagia or having them eat uh, bedding. In some circumstances, we are, we are trying to incorporate the BioDAC uh, food monitoring uh, system uh, into the core services. We're trying to get it uh, structured into our cost center right now. Um, if you look on the side of the cage, this is a box that has a uh, a computer controlled arm that will allow um, animals access to food during certain parts of the day, um, or um, it will simply just measure their food intake um, in real time um, as they go throughout their day. And so with this system, 
We can not only monitor their food intake, but we can control it. We can measure things like meal size, meal frequency, meal duration, or we can implement um, uh, interventions like intermittent fasting, time-restricted feeding, um, or just simple calorie restriction. With energy expenditure, we have two systems from Columbus uh, that are Oxymax, Cl Oxymax Clam systems. These are um, uh, boxes that can uh, that have uh, air going in and out, where we can measure oxygen consumption, CO2 production, um, and we use indirect calorimetry to to estimate energy expenditure. We have algorithms uh, that allow us to do component analysis, looking at total non-resting, resting energy expenditure, um, uh, some calculations that might help with the thermic effect of food. And of course, we can get whole body substrate oxidation with, um, with uh, the respiratory exchange ratio. We do have specialized, we can either collect urine in these uh, caging systems, or we do have specialized um, caging systems that will freeze down the urine immediately if we want to measure things like um, catecholamines in the urine. If you look uh, on the side of these boxes, you'll see these infrared beam uh, break bars and so that we can uh, keep track over a 24-hour period both ambulatory and non-ambulatory spontaneous activity in the animal. For exercise interventions, we generally use treadmills. We have a number of these treadmills that people can check out for their, for their own studies, or we can help them uh, design and implement studies, uh, both in mice and rats for force running. We do have some capacities for volitional wheel running uh, that can go into cages. And then we have chambers uh, with, uh, that are um, uh, with our treadmills where we can look at exercise energetics, like the cost of an exercise bout or the substrates that are being um, oxidized during the exercise bout. For body composition, with the help uh, of the CERC, we just recently purchased a, a new replacement instrument. This is the ECHO MRI 900. This is not an imaging unit. Uh, it, it uses quantitative magnetic resonance uh, to assess fat mass, lean mass, and body water. The, the beauty about this piece of equipment is it's mobile. Um, we can take it down to the different rooms of the facilities. We can decontaminate it with the help of OLAR, and, and they can take it to your room and get measurements uh, in a non-invasive way without anesthesia. You put the animal um, in in the tube, in the machine, and you can get measures of body composition within one to three minutes. So this is a, a fantastic new addition to, uh, to the core resources. Um, like I said, um, one of our systems, one of our Oxymax systems is set up to where we can use radio labeled tracers uh, that can traffic dietary fat and look at its retention over uh, a period of time. And we can use a, a tritiated water to look at de novo derived lipid and how it's retained around the body. And in certain um, applications, we can look at uh, tissue specific glucose uptake under overfeeding conditions. Uh, and, and I'll just point out, this is a particular study where we're looking at dams with their litters and we're doing, uh, we're following uh, energy through the mom as she eats it, as she puts it in her milk, and as she passes it to her pups. So we can do these types of studies to follow energy um, through, uh, through animals and look how it's um, oxidized and stored. Um, our core facilities are run by uh, Dr. Matt Jackman and Ginger Johnson, who have uh, uh, long been involved with all of these animal core facilities. And so if you uh, want any additional information, the best you can contact me, but I'm probably going to direct you either to our NORC website uh, or to Matt or Ginger, who can help um, answer questions with, with what, what's available and how to schedule. <laughs>